and Craig Smoke. Baylor is in a bad place, and Texas Tech just made sure they stayed there. Despite the comeback that was dramatic in Orlando, nothing changed from who they have been most of this entire year. And they were beaten up, battered, and basically put to sleep pretty quick. They were. Texas Tech was really good. And uh, I love their running back. He's fantastic. Taj Brooks is just uh, like trying to tackle a a fire hydrant who's not just just a bulky kid. He was fantastic. I said before the game, whoever ended up winning the running game would win the game. Texas Tech won that by a landslide. So, Monterey Baldwin who last year was pretty good for them and is a local kid. He played down in Colleen about an hour southwest of Waco. He didn't do much early in the year. There was a lot of questions. What's wrong with him? Where is he? And come to find out, he was kind of in the doghouse. And his football coach at Colleen Shoemaker even said that Monterey had to kind of get some things, like uh, get some things together. Now he's one of the few players that you can think will make a play. After the game, he was asked a couple of different times, what is wrong with his football team? Monterey, we'll make make sure you you said everyone has to start playing hard. You're six games into the season. Why would that be the case? Why would that not already be the case? Where was the momentum from last week? What's going on with this team? People were sitting around waiting for their their buddy to make the play. When they need to make the play, that play, like you got to treat every play like that because you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You never know when the ball may pop out and you do the backside cutoff and you can pick it up. Like it's just stuff like that. And people aren't doing that every play. We do it here and there, but it's not every play. And that's why I say we got to be consistent with it. With it being the sixth game of the season, I don't really know why, but I just I feel like people are just like here for the ride, and that's not what we're here for. We're here to win games. And people have to step up. People have to be leaders. People have to take accountability and just stuff like that. So we have to, this is some growing up we have to do. People are here for the ride. Yeah, um, this sounds a little bit like what was going on at Texas for a while, right? With, you know, they, people came in and they're, they're there to be, they, they like being called a college football player, but they're, they don't necessarily like being a college football player, right? Everything that goes with it. And, um, you know, look, to hear that from a player, uh, I think that's good news for Baylor that you have people who can recognize that the problem is, is like, how do you fix it? How do you get guys who have not been previously invested to get excited about a season that's now two and four and fighting yourself out of a hole? Like, that, that is, that's going to be really tough for them moving forward because they, you know, I don't, it's hard to see what's going to change, right? Like, they, you know, I said at the post game show the other night, look, they, you could put almost, 20 of 22 starters up for grabs on either side of the ball and just see what you got. And there are some guys that obviously would start no matter what, but just to maybe light a fire under, under the starter. So they play a little bit better, the guys who are established. And, you know, right now, I don't think anybody along the offensive line is, you know, you know, earning the scholarship. Right. I mean, I, I say that, you know, in, in partially jest, but my gosh, the offensive line has played so bad. Um, you're trying to get your quarterback healthy and playing better. And within 10 snaps, every game, he's been hit four times already. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you expect to, you know, sustain any, like whether it's Blake Shapin, Sawyer Robertson, RJ Martinez, or the wildcat, or anybody like if they're getting hit that, that often, like almost every third play, it is hard to sustain that. Yeah, as Travis uh, from the website pointed out, and I think a couple of other people, it's not a great sign when the guy who was in the doghouse is now suddenly one of your big leaders, mm-hmm. um, you know, halfway through the season. So, um, yeah, that's concerning. I, I just – I guess I shake my head sometimes when we start talking about Dave Aranda and this team and what they say in the post game because we've heard it all before. We hear it every single week after every single loss that have mounted since going back to last year. And I didn't – ever sign up for a psychology or psychiatry course, but maybe we need to, to just have some insight on to how to cover this team because that's what it turns into. I mean, this is, it's just not a good look uh, that they don't seem to have the answers, that they don't seem to be getting all that much better, that they can't carry momentum, that they can't execute at a basic level in many ways, that they don't have, um, you know, better leadership, that a guy like a Monterey Baldwin could be in the doghouse and all of a sudden he's like the top guy speaking about others not playing up to a certain level. Um, it's just a mess, and uh, you know, credit to Texas Tech—they're a, a fine football team. 
I think maybe when all is said and done the second half of the year that they're a pretty good football team, you know, remains to be seen. But they came into Waco and did their thing and left no doubts about who the better team was on Saturday night and, and who's the better team right now and who will be the better team moving forward uh, because there's no sign from this Baylor football team that they're going to just turn this around. They're not making a bowl game. Um, they're not going four and two down the stretch with the schedule that they have and based on what we've seen so far. So I'm sorry, but I'm just a little sick and tired. And I know we have to do it, but I'm just a little sick and tired of having to like have a psychology degree to try and figure out what's wrong with this team and read through the lines and what it means behind the scenes. And like, this is, it's ridiculous. I mean, like, it's just ridiculous that this is still the conversation six weeks into the season is like, well, is everything good behind the scenes or is, is there the coaches fine or is, is like, where's the leadership? I mean, what are we talking about here? So, yeah, I, I think it's a bad sign that that's still a conversation at this point And there doesn't really seem to be any answers that are that are arriving either. And so hopefully this bye week is a good breather for them, and that's what they needed, and they can all refocus and reorganize and all of that. But, I mean, the apathy levels are setting in. You know, that wasn't like Tech brought some, like, massive crowd to Waco either. They were kind of feeling it. They were kind of like, yeah, this is sort of a big game, whatever. And they had a good representation, but it wasn't like in years past. And Baylor didn't have a great showing either because I think a lot of people thought that, you know, they were going to get duped again. That last week in Orlando was a mirage, and it was a mirage because we saw what followed that. And you know what? They're also tired of showing up on Saturday nights or to home games and leaving not just disappointed, not just with losses, but like getting your butts kicked at home like you did on Saturday night. So, yeah, we can get into all the philosophy and all that stuff, and that's fine, and it makes for some interesting discussions at times. But, like, bottom line, they're just not a good football team. They're not very well um, coached in some ways. Uh, they can't execute very well at a lot of times. I know you can point to, well, they're young or they're this or they're that, and that all is fine, but the bottom line is they're just not very good, and that's the most important thing is they're not very good, and they don't really look like they're getting that much better because that was a step back. That was not a stand where you are, and at least you took that step forward and you stayed there. That wasn't another step forward. That was a step right back to where you were before Orlando. So, yeah, we can talk about the – the culture and all those types of things. But whatever's going on, it's leading to performance after performance after performance where they're leaving a bad taste in your mouth. From Smokey Bear, why does it take a player and not the coach to speak truth? Are you listening, CDA, which is Coach Dave Aranda? Uh, also, from a couple of others, um, Kim, every Baylor fan forgot and ignored why they lost to Texas State. We're behind 35-7 to to UCF. It wasn't just Tech who's been humiliating them. Uh, also, Zachary, that's the safe response from Monterey, saying there are major players who are slacking at all levels. Like last year, people telling me Spencer Sanders was more interested in girls and money than playing football. Um I do David think though, Gibson, thank you, Craig Smoke in capital letters. I do think though, when you have like, I remember asking Grayson during a podcast of like, what's this team's motto mantra? And he's like, person over player. And I was like, really? That's the, that's the motto. And then I was like, okay, like I kind of understand it, but as beneficial as that is for these young men and their lives moving forward, that's all great. That's fantastic. But that's also not the point of this whole thing. The point of the whole thing is to do that and to have them mature as men and become better men and fathers and sons and everything moving forward. But you also have to win football games. And they're not doing that other part. And so person over player is great. And you can do that when you're winning games and you've got the, the leeway to do that. But when you're doing that and you're losing games and then you're wondering why guys are just along for the ride – well, because well, you're more than a football. You know, like I, I feel like that message gets mixed, and to, or it's like, well, it doesn't really matter how we perform because it's all about how we develop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so, I, well, I, mean, I think that kind of clouds the messaging to where it's good from a human perspective, but from a football perspective, I feel like maybe the way that it's received by some people is like, yeah, we lost, but at least we're doing the right things off the field and we're improving and it's like the fan base is screaming like yeah we like that part of it but we need you to be good on the field for us to be here to support it and enjoy it and and have the things that you want to have retired stockbroker uh craig smoke tough love time i asked dave aranda when i got into the uh recruitment and who they were recruiting and how was the nil affecting them one way or the other and he mentioned something about how they had to be a little bit they had to look at certain individuals um but I then, and I, you know, I don't like to interrupt him, but I did say, but don't you have to win? Do you guys remember that? But don't you need to win? And he said yes. But, yeah, that's kind of like, it's all nice, but you got to have some turds 
Well, you got to have some people who are on the edge. You don't want anyone well, to like put your name in the headlines because of bad stuff. But you've got to have guys who have an edge when they're on the football field who can be nice, nice young men when they're walking around I, on I, campus. I think the other thing is like. Craig, to follow up on your person over player thing, that's great, but the fans don't get to go to those meetings. Right. Right. I mean, they don't, they, like, they're not in that holistic spiritual enrichment program. Like, that's not what they came to see. So I think it's, it's an awesome goal to have, but they've got to get players who can win in the league. And right now, they don't have a roster of guys who can do that. And it is painfully obvious week after week. And, they had the Big 12 title in their hands and a Sugar Bowl title and the best season in school history. And granted, NIL coming around right after that and them not being ready for it certainly was out of their control. Like that, they're not the only school who's, you know, kind of trying to wade through and find the best way for them individually to do it because there's not like a salary cap. There's not league rules. You just kind of have to make up your own way and figure out what works for you in your market, in your school. But they have not capitalized in any way off of that. And each game feels like two steps somebody, further away. Somebody just mentioned the Big 12 championship and Sugar Bowl seemed like now 10 years ago. I said that this morning. Like, yeah. it just feels so long ago that they did that. It was... It just was so long that, I mean, it was two years ago. They, like, they should, you know, the quarterback who won that game is still their quarterback now. But everything else has changed. And, you know, they made the right decision to change the offense when they did in 2021 for the personnel that they had. But then they have not recruited guys who fit it well now. And I told this to you guys earlier as well. The reliable, violent offense is not reliable. It's certainly not violent, and it's barely an offense. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, not a great sign for Baylor when it's the same institutional problems talking about within the program. They said we're going on behind the scenes last year that – or Randa discussed throughout the year about the disconnect. You fire a defensive coordinator because of maybe the way he coaches or what he does or what he says to players, and that hasn't worked out. Well, here's the other thing is you can talk, you know, and I, I, like I said, I think the person over player thing is valid. I don't think you bring in a bunch of future jailbirds just to win football games. No. I'm not saying that either, but, like, the lack of an edge, gee, I wonder where that could be coming from. I mean, you're basically telling you know, with the whole messaging, I, I feel like that's where sometimes it gets lost is, like, well, we got blown out, but, you know, at least we're good people. You know, like, that's kind of how it feels. And it's like, yeah, that's good, but that's not really, like, that's not how it's also supposed to work either. Like, there's got to be a, a middle ground there. So, yeah, you don't take just a bunch of punks to win games. Uh, you, you, you do as best you can to have good people, but, like, there also has to be, like, that edge that's established as well. And so I, I think that kind of gets lost maybe sometimes with the person over player. I, I don't know. That's, I'm, I'm just trying to find reasons to explain this, quite frankly. Um, but, yeah, it's it's the, kind of the same issues. And, you know, the thing about it is we can get all excited about the young players, and I know somebody else has pointed this out, but in this era, Caden Jenkins is probably going to, like, LSU next year. Mm -hmm. I mean – Monterey Baldwin's playing for freaking Texas Tech next year. That's the reality of it. Like, it's great. Yeah, you've got young players. And, and if you go, well, look, you just need time for them to mature. Okay, cool. You just need a little bit of time to grow up. Okay, cool. That was great five years ago when you knew they would be here no matter what, unless they got themselves kicked sure. off the team. Nowadays, they can up and leave whenever they want to. So you can't rely on the fact that you're going to have Caden Jenkins as a junior with Tevin Williams and all these other guys as the secondary is going to be a hole in three years and it's going to be dominant. You can't rely on that. You, you, I'm, I'm sure that some of those guys are already getting DMs about, you know, people interested in where they're going to go. So you can't maintain it the same way you used to. It's a year-by-year -year business now, and they clearly haven't shown that they're super well-equipped to deal with the year-by-year the -year nature of this at this point. And the positives that you want to hold on to don't even play in this, this scenario anymore because it's not a four years and let guys grow business anymore. It is a year-to-year, -year, and so even what you have, you, you're not even guaranteed to have, and that's what's – Super alarming because what's the pull to stay here? Person over player? To some maybe, but I just that's just not going to get the job done and the job being being a great coach off the field, but also winning games on the field. Well, they did something right with Monterey, but unfortunately it's not reaching everybody else. From Kim Coulter, Super Chat, thank you. What coach survives three losing seasons out of four? The Big 12 championship was a complete anomaly. 
Baylor can do better. They did play for one back in 2019, did not win it, uh, can do better in my opinion. Now, Dave Aranda, as we kind of close out this discussion, and it, it, it's, it's, there's nothing seems to be better. The offense, it looks hard to gain three yards. It looks hard to even throw the ball past the, the first down marker. Third and seven seems like third down and 17. So the last time they won a game, by the time they host Iowa State in two, what, three weekends, the last time that they won a home game against an FBS opponent was Kansas here in Waco. It will be a full year since that happened when they host Iowa State. In fact, maybe more than that. I asked that question for Dave Aranda just to kind of wonder, does he even realize that? Dave, by the time you play your next home game, it will have been over a year since you beat an FBS program. Mm -hmm. Is that hard to fathom? I'm talking about at home. Right. No, with I, Kansas last year. Yes. No, I appreciate that. You know, we're working on just with this particular team, trying to, to improve and be the best that we can. I appreciate the question. I think those are things that I think if we can get, get this team figured out and get our work ethic, you know, to continue to push to improve and get the, the execution better on the field, I believe that that will take care of itself. I, I don't see the execution improving. I don't see that much improvement, despite what was the phenomenal comeback against UCF. Um, I don't know the answer. Everyone wants to fire somebody, but how many of you have also been fired, and what did that feel like? It's easy to do that, though. You're a fan. You want somebody else to be your football coach. You want something that is at least different. Gerald, Gerald uh, Joyner Craig, yep, they are going to leave. I feel like I can see it Caden Jenkins' eyes that he's not happy with what's going on. Um, from Darling Depp, they're not great, but they're good enough to win games if our offense did anything. She's talking about complimenting the defense. Our offense keeps our defense on the field the majority of the game. Well, um, the offensive line absolutely stinks. That's the problem with the offense. Blake Shapin came back and immediately got hit, what, 35 times the other night? I mm -hmm. mean... Yeah, he got beat up. He's gotten beat up. It was almost, it yeah. was embarrassing that effort offensively, um, starting with the line. No run game to speak of because they couldn't block anybody. Um, passing game actually three hundred plus yards. Y'all realize that they threw three hundred yards mm. in the air. Yep, and it didn't even feel like it because your quarterback was too busy on every running play or every drop back of getting hit most of the time, and still still managed three hundred yards. So it's not like the offense is completely like you know, neutered, but when you have no run game, those 300 yards don't really matter unless you're hitting big plays. And quite frankly, outside of Monterey Baldwin and the occasional catch by a Hal Presley or something, that, that never happens with regularity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the offense, the play calling, I think you could point to, but it all starts with that line. I mean, they can't run the ball, and in an offense that's predicated on running the ball, that's kind of an issue. All right, then here is Bryce Cherry from the Waco Trib asked Dave Aranda this question in the post game. I believe that they've shown that they can block people and they can uh, pass block and they can make communication and, and make adjustments within the game. Uh, we have to do that consistently and we've got to do it when it matters most. And tonight we did not do that. I've seen them do it. Um, we need to do it more. All right. So he was asked a question in the post game. That was from Bryce of the Waco Trib from uh, Brett Beeman. Uh, Aranda and staff don't strike me as a group that's equipped to succeed in this semi-pro environment. Um, I think, I mean, that might be uh, a jump to conclusions. I don't think there's like everything set up around them to do that now. Um, and not to say that it couldn't be, but I do think that they put themselves like what they did though. Like this is a, I mean, some of it has to do with NIL because transfer portal and NIL go hand in hand, obviously. You know, when you go offer a kid a transfer, he's going to ask you, like, what can you do for me there? But I do think transfer portal-wise, they did put themselves in this spot by two years ago, not getting into it as much as they could have. And, um, you know, kind of thinking like they had the guys that were ready to step up and play when they weren't. So then they got into it more last year, and that hasn't worked out like the – the offensive line transfers haven't worked out. Like, Keetron Jackson's been all right. But, again, like, 
you know, what 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 does that mean in the long run? If they if throw not... a big ball to him up in the air, he's probably not coming down with it. No. He's he's like that's the guy the way he was described that when there's a um uh, what do you call it? A, uh, a jump ball yeah. that he should jump up and every once in a while, just once every two or three times, rip it away from the defender or make the tough catch. And I feel like they throw it up and more often than not, the ball hits the ground, no matter what the situation is. Like he gets pushed over or just can't make the tough catch or whatever. And I don't want to single him out, but it's just like they feast or famine when they can't run the ball on the deep ball or Monterey making a big play. And when those guys aren't making those deep ball catches, you're literally just, it's Monterey has to bust a 75 yarder for us to have a chance to score. With a catch and run situation. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's all it becomes. And so, yeah, everybody just sits back and tees off and, you know, credit to tech. I mean, they dominated up front. Their defensive line played really well and they shut down the run game and they made Baylor one dimensional, still gave up a lot of passing yards, obviously, but it didn't, didn't end up really mattering on the long run. And, you know, they had a good idea of a game plan coming in, and they executed it well. But, you know, I do want to give them credit. But at the same time, this is an every single week thing with Baylor, no. basically. I mean, this – let's – the UCF game was a quarter. It was a quarter of big mm-hmm. plays. That's all it was. It was not a dominant second half. It was not a dominant – it was a quarter at the end of the game that won them that game and nothing more. And so this is basically who they've been – all year long outside of that fourth quarter. And that's the part where, yeah, you can do this, you can do that, you can hope for this, you can hope for that. But it's like they are who they are at this stage. We're six games in. They are who they are. And you know what? I don't blame fans for just kind of being over it at this point because it just – every time you want to get excited about something, you feel like you're getting your hopes up and your hopes get dashed. And they can only do and go to that well so many times before they just lose people. And I feel like, unfortunately for Dave Aranda, he's lost people because this is going back a, a year now to, to where it's just been like this every single week. David Gibson, Baylor is mistaking, not holding kids accountable with recruiting kids who need to be held accountable. Recruit edgy kids, but hold them accountable. That is the answer. And you know, there's a question I asked Mac Rhodes about this and even Aranda because of what they dealt with about eight years ago or whatever it was, do that does that keep them from going after some kids that, like I said, you got to have some that have turd. Uh, they got to be turds. You got to have some guys who are edgy. And I understand that you have to make sure that those who you recruit don't all of a sudden put you back in the headlines either. I asked uh, if you've ever been fired before. Kim Coulter, I've fired maybe hundreds of employees, godly, um, in my career. And yeah, it's touch. Uh, it's tough and sometimes sucks, but suck it or continue to lose. Um, uh, Roy Melton, getting fired sucks, of course, but just like Matt Wells at Tech, he was a great guy, but we could do better, and we did. And then somebody else asked about the up-tempo, Lee Deckard. You can't have up-tempo if you can't run the football and protect your quarterback. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't think they can do that. I The more I think about it, the, the harder, like outside of – you know, turning this around and making this a, a seven and five season, like I, it, it's going to be a really difficult path forward for this coaching staff because nothing they're doing is working. They can't they can't point to say, well, this works, but you know, for example, with Blake Shapen being out, this works, but Blake Blake Shapen's out, so we have that excuse. Like with the top quarterbacks out, okay, they don't grow on trees, but you know, he makes their offense work a little bit better, but it's not. It's not working. So nothing they can say points to anything working. Yeah, he came back. He got healthy. Had a great showing in that fourth quarter against UCF, only to turn around and get sacked a bajillion times. Yeah, it's not sustainable. He can't take that kind of a beating every week. Now, not everybody's going to be as good as Texas Tech. Uh, not everybody's going to you know have as good of a game plan or be able to attack them in the same way. But odds are he's probably going to still get beat up a few times, and okay, that's fine. But it just feels like pulling teeth every week now, trying to get up for these games. Um, you know, maybe I'm alone on an island there, but you can only put so much lipstick on a pig before you just call it what it is. And this has been a pig of a season, and very disappointing. And you can say, well, the expectations were out of whack. Too many people thought they were going to be way better than they were. And that's fair. I definitely know some people who had this team like way better than they ever had any chance of being. And I had them better than they were being. I had them like eight wins this season, which I don't think was crazy coming off of last year and all of the changes they made. And eight home games. But, and eight home games. But now it's crazy. And now we're like, oh, well, the eight home games are actually a hindrance. What? Like, now now you're having to find reasons of why it's not anywhere even close to expectations. Forget not meeting expectations. They're not even close to expect. They're not going to make a bowl game. 
Okay, it's year four, and they're not going to make a bowl game barring what a five and one run to close out the season. Yeah. Okay, sure, that's that's going to happen. I, I you know I I love Dave Aranda. I think that he is good for college football. I, I like a lot of the staff as well. Um, this is not a, a crusade against them in any way, shape, or form. But I'm just going. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills every week, talking about the same mental side of the game and the what's disconnecting and. It's just, it's just okay, I get it, and those are probably the reasons why. But after a while, as fans, as media, or whatever, like we can only take so much of that diagnosis before it's like the proof's in the pudding, and the pudding is, is bad and expired, and it's dried up at this point, and they got to figure something out with these games remaining. And even then, I don't know how much they can figure out because it doesn't seem like all that much has changed even halfway through the season. We have to get to Rodney Blanton.